everyone welcome back to the channel thanks for tuning in i'm sitting out here we're into early november we got a nice day it's like 48 degrees little bit of wind nice bright sun and i'm itching to get out i'm hoping to get out this weekend to chase some giant smallmouth you know we're we're after turnover and before ice up usually you're talking about a couple week period where you can get out and take advantage of those conditions and chase giant trophy smallmouth and not only catch a giant smallmouth but catch numbers of giant smallmouth it's probably my favorite time to fish yes the conditions can be brutal and yes the fishing can be brutal as well but when you do find them it can be so worth it it really can be so i'm excited to hopefully get out a couple of times before we do freeze over you know, last year at this time, we were froze over. And, you know, normally I would say anytime between now and Thanksgiving, you know, the next couple of weeks is normal for us to freeze over. But we're holding strong. We're supposed to have some uh, 50 degree days coming up this weekend. So hopefully that helps prolong all of this. And I can maybe get out a few more than a couple of times. But what I want to help you guys with is if you're looking to get out and potentially catch a trophy smallmouth, how do you do it? What are you looking for? So the first thing that I think you need to do is establish a lake that's got a good reputation for catching trophy fish. So if you know that, you know, a lake has big smallmouth in it, then you're already good to go. But if you don't have a lake or you're looking for a new lake, here are some things that you need to know. First, you're looking for a lake that has the right forage. So if you're up here in the North Country, you're talking a lake that's got you know, either Cisco or Alewife in it, maybe a really good perch population, but generally speaking, you want the Cisco and the Alewife because they're bigger, they're fattier, they grow bigger fish. If it's got rusty crayfish in it, that only helps because that is another really good source of protein for the fish, helps grow big fish. So if you've got that forage species or those forage species, you're probably looking in the right area. If you have the ability to find some creel surveys or DNR surveys that indicate that the population of fish has some really big fish in it, again, that's a great source. But you don't even have to know that it's got big smallmouth. If the creel surveys don't say anything about smallmouth, but shows really big walleye, really big pike, really big muskie, the chances are that it grows really big smallmouth as well. A lot of times I've found that the surveys that you get off of DNR websites aren't necessarily accurate because when they did the sampling, it was at the wrong time of year or they did it in a manner that wouldn't necessarily get them big smallmouth. So you wanna be aware of that as well. So if you can utilize the other species to indicate that there are big smallmouth as well, you wanna make note of that. So once you've found a lake that you wanna target, you need to recognize that the, the smallmouth will probably be holding anywhere from 20 feet down to about 50 foot of water. So you may have to be looking in a depth that you're not accustomed to fishing. So because of that, you're gonna to wanna to use some baits that will easily get you down to those depths, whether those are drop shots, heavy jigs, blade baits, spoons, uh, swim baits, things that can get you down to that level and, and keep you down near the bottom is key you have to recognize that this time of year, the activity level of these fish is really, really slow. So you're always gonna be able to catch a fish here. They're probably on a jerk bait or a swim bait by keeping it off the bottom. But generally speaking, you wanna bop these fish on the head with your bait. You know, a lot of times the fish I catch will have clay and mud on their fins because they're just sitting there buried, you know, with their bellies on the bottom. And you can feel when you find a good area that's got a lot of fish, you'll actually feel your bait almost hit the fish and roll the fish over. And that's a good way to get them to bite, but it's also a good way to real, you know, to recognize you're in an area that has fish. So when you do get that first bite, the first thing that you need to do is mentally mark the cast that you made. Because if you can repeat that exact cast, chances are good you can catch another fish on the next cast and on the next cast. And you can usually catch two, three, four fish out of that little pod before they recognize what's going on and they go, they go, they just shut off. The key with that though, is if you come back two hours later, you probably can get a couple, you can probably get them to fire up again. And they're not moving. They're holding in those, those wintering spots for a reason. Uh, it's definitely just something you want to make note of because it will make you that much better on the water and you'll be able to, to catch more fish out of that group of wintering fish. 
Uh, and it, the, the key is to be able to get that first one to bite. You don't always get them to go on the first cast. You may need, need to make five, six casts to that spot before you trigger one to bite. So that's really important. Uh, the other thing I want to do, I want to note when you do catch these fish, don't put them in your live well. Catch them, take a picture, let them go right away. A lot of them will, you know, be bloated from coming up from deep water. There's no reason to put these fish in the live well. You're just adding undue stress onto them. Let them get back down to their wintering spot as, as soon as possible. So, you know, that's the keys there. Now it's where do you look to catch these fish? And yes, you want to fish that deep water, but there are things that I think you want to look for. First, any sort of rock transition area is really good. I don't generally catch my fish out of just a big rock patch. They're usually either holding on a rock, a rock transition, so sand to rock transition, or they're holding in areas that have more sand or clay with a scattered rock here and there. It seems like they prefer having a little bit more of that softer bottom that they can sit on, but still have the rocks around to give them some comfort. So I'm not looking for giant, you know, boulder fields. I'm more looking for that isolated, scattered type of bottom composition that seems better. I'm also looking for areas that are flat. So if you've got a big break that drops off into a flat area before another big break, that flat area is generally where those fish are going to be sitting. They're, from, in my opinion, they're not normally sitting on a steep slope. They're sitting either at the top of the slope or they're sitting at the bottom of the slope, but they're not right on that slope. I think, again, it goes back to what they want to sit on. If they want to have their bellies in mud, they're not going to do it real good if they're sitting on a, you know, on a straight vertical drop. So you want to you want to identify flat spots. If you've got a long tapering point and there's a flat spot on that point, that's a really good place to look. Saddles between two humps or a point and a hump or a point and an island, that saddle point or that's in the middle part of the saddle where you've got a flat spot is a really good place to look. Uh, you know, if you've got a hump that comes up and has a little patch of hard bottom on it, another great place to look. But you need to look for those areas where they're going to be, you know, wintering. They don't move far. They're there for the entire winter when you get there. So they're, they're generally going to be in areas that they feel comfortable with and that have some sort of topped out flat spot on it. it that, I mean, I'm not saying you can't catch them elsewhere. That's what I'm looking for. And it seems to be really productive for me. And the key is once you identify a spot, guys, they're usually going to be there year to year to year they're going to use the same exact spots because whatever that spot has composition wise is exactly what they're looking for and it's not going to change so when you figure out the right cast and you put your time in on a new lake and you find one spot that's good that spot should be good every year so you, you know the next time you go you can fish that spot hopefully find another spot and after three four times to a lake if you find four or five spots you've got a really good milk run of areas to fish on that lake that are going to be good probably for the next 25 years. That's one of the things I love about it. I'll head, you know, to, to my favorite lakes or to a new lake. And there's a lot of wasted time, guys. There's a lot of, of just days. You don't, you don't catch a fish, but when you find a spot, usually you can catch two, three, four fish off of it. And you could do that multiple times a day. And if you've got two, three, four spots on a lake, you can sit there and catch fish all day long by rotating those spots. You just have to put your time in in order to find those. So that's what I'm doing, guys. This is the, the time of year, the next couple of weeks is the time of year I love to get out. You know, the other thing I'm gonna uh, address is you wanna make sure you dress appropriately. You know, Stryker makes absolutely phenomenal winter gear. They're geared towards ice fishermen and that's kind of the stuff you're gonna be wearing out in the boat while you're out there. So. You want to make sure you dress appropriately. I always overdress. If I get too hot, I can take layers off. If I don't dress warm and I get to the lake and I'm cold, I, don't, I can't put more, more layers on because I don't have it. So you want to dress appropriately uh, and stay warm when you're out in the water. Because the last thing you want to do is fall in because when you're talking 40, 42 degree water temps, you could potentially be in a serious position. So you want to be careful while you're out there. So I hope this was helpful, guys. Remember, catch them big smallmouth. Let them go right away so that you can catch them the next year. I really do think we're going to see, at least here in Wisconsin, a state record smallmouth caught in the next year. So it's, it's really good right now. So I hope it was helpful. If it was, hit that like button. Stay tuned for another video tomorrow.